Kingu Kongu Tai Gojira. Kingu Kongu. <laughs> Kingu Kongu. 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 <laughs> okay, recording uh, software's put, up. Put that on a roll. You need it. <laughs> I I am probably gonna cut that little bit into the to the beginning before I do the intro. Wh- which one, the Kingu <laughs> Kongaroo? Maybe. You'll, you'll just have Kongaroo. to find out. You know, we could. <laughs> you'll just have to wait and find out. <laughs> we could start the recording by just chanting Kingu Kongaroo. Kingu Kongaroo. Kongu. Like the Kingu. Kingu Kongaroo. Kingu Kongaroo. Kingu Kongaroo. Kongu. 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 Kingu Kongu. Kingu Kongu. And that's a lot of Kong. Hello and welcome to the Loose Butthole Reviews. I am your host, Smokey, and joining with me, as always, is my co-host, Booge. Kingu Kongu. <laughs> and joining with us again is our co-hosts, Murda and Starfish. Kingu Kongu? Tai Gojira! And we got Tiny Dancer joining with us. She's putting another punch in her par- punch card. Is this number four or number three? I, I lost count. Four. Bleach. Four. Yeah. <laughs> I Kingu Kongaroo. I accidentally punched a hole in the same in the, uh, uh, in the same hole. So I. <laughs> you got the double hole. <laughs> double hole it, but you see, there's like it's like a little wider than the other hole, so you can see that there's two. <laughs> Forensics. <laughs> and uh, before we get into the review proper, as always, I'm going to give the three rules of our rating system. The first rule is it must be a fraction of five. One being we hate it. Five means we love it. Rule number two, if we want our money back, we give it a good old Jeff Goldblum. And rule number three, if we all agree that's doing the review, that it deserves a god tier, a six out of five, then it will get it. And to today, we are reviewing King Kong versus Godzilla from 1962 and 1963. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Yeah, yeah, definitely will. Um, before before we, we get into are all of... more more importantly, we are reviewing the 1963 version today. Correct. Uh, yes. Um, mm. Yep, because we got the Americanized version, um, and uh, this film has just a wealth of production notes we've got a lot of huge uh 60s japanese names um in here um you know we've got uh ishiro honda as the director um we've got uh suboria so uh sorry uh suborea uh as the special effects um and it's uh it's it, it it's uh it's fun uh you know this is a Toho film, um, and uh, we open up with Mister Taco. <laughs> <laughs> Taco you mean Groucho Marx, right? Yes, um, he is frustrated. Um, he, um has a television show um that his company is sponsoring and he desperately needs something to boost his ratings um that's when he hears a rumor from a doctor about a giant monster that the doctor had discovered on a small slightly inhabited uh island called pharaoh island politically Um, incorrect inhabited island (laughs) Yeah, yes. that's. <laughs> I mean, the original yes. from the original King Kong, it wasn't. It wasn't. Yeah. it wasn't friendly either. So they just <laughs> not sticking with the. the they just oh no, with... I don't expect anything from this time period. Also, not the last time that Toho will uh, do the brown face yeah. either. <laughs> no, of course not. Um, so, uh, Mister Taco, um, believes that it would be a superb idea. Uh, to capture this monster uh, to gain publicity. Um, So he sends out two of his men, uh, uh, Osamu uh, Sakurai and Kinsaburo uh, Fure. um, For the kaiju people, we can sum up most of the film to a lot of human drama. 
kaiju fans are not going to mm-hmm. like that. Um, <laughs> you know, I I feel like it's... they should be used to it though, because like I feel like every kaiju oh we're film used we've to watched... it. We're I've used to had, it, but it's. it's I don't know <laughs> what uh, what kaiju film people are watching that is like all monsters fighting. I have not yet seen there's, one. Very there's few. some good ones. There's some good ones it's out less... there, but it's very few. And those, uh, we we watched one recently that was pretty much a good chunk of, of monster fights. So. I feel like it's less human drama than. Uh, Montego, almost. Oh, so. Mate- Matango, yes. Yeah, I mean, it Matango is. Oh, yeah. is nothing but For human sure. drama. More, uh, that is... Universal human drama than just, I mean, not drama, not trauma, and trauma. Then, then it is, um, you know, just this one small little group of people like it was in that movie. Yeah, that was that was too much human drama. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it was quite a bit. Um, so uh, these these two gentlemen head to the island. Um, before we get to see the island and all that fun stuff, we join an American nuclear submarine <laughs> that is, um, I'm guessing, at the South Pole. Um, be, well, I mean, I guess it could be the North I Pole too. I know but... they're they're not they're they're where I don't I can't remember where they buried. Godzilla, but they're wherever they buried Godzilla in the last Godzilla. It's race near. Uh, it's near. It's near Russia because. Uh, okay, so that it, when, when he when he emerges, uh, he does fight some uh, some tanks that have the red star on it. So we assume yeah. that's somewhere in the Soviet Union. Oh, yeah, so I mean, I saw, yeah, I saw the that red too. ribbon army. Army. So they, it is <laughs> yeah, the red they ribbon are, army. <laughs> they are keeping to canon. This is the Godzilla from Godzilla Raids again. Yes. He, this is still the first Godzilla from from the first two. No, and the first. These... No, the first Godzilla got uh, spoiler, I guess. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Godzilla. Forgot he got he got that. Yeah, this is the second Hydrogen Godzilla. Right. Yeah, yeah. I forgot what then. The, this is just like a second one that popped up in the raids again. Yeah, this is just the second one that just. Yeah, they never really explain it. It's just another Godzilla. Okay, gotcha. I wouldn't have known and that. We have... I always assume Godzilla is Godzilla. No, uh, that's uh, why Shin Godzilla is all fucked up because he's apparently supposed to be canonically the first Godzilla coming back to life. <laughs> oh, I love oh, Shin Godzilla. Yeah. Uh, what's that, Tiny? Do you answer? I think you have something to oh. like, get a word in edgewise here, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was just gonna comment on these uh, Ameri- this American submarine filled with these. Oh yeah, please, please awful, do. I wanted to spend some time there. <laughs> awful accents. <laughs> oh, it's hilarious. It's amazing. Definitely not their original voices. Yeah, the country accent is We deserve it, though. I mean, I was thinking, like, this is what we do when we dub, like, Japanese and Asian people, like, especially in these older films. Like, we make them sound, you know, real, not PC. And, like, they did the same. Murda just rewatched that. Yeah. So we we watched the... I I gotta clarify. we, We did watch the... Um, Japanese, you know, with with um, English subtitles, so it yeah, was the Japanese subbed audio. Version. Yes, the sub. But um, I did fall asleep. Um, but today I um, watched it. I watched it over again, but I could only find the dub version. And yeah, they don't sound. The American people don't sound the same at all. They don't sound nearly as hilarious and like stereotypical. They're probably using the original voices in the yeah, the dub probably movie. the the um, the words matched up better with the mouths the, and stuff. The Japanese characters are definitely have a little little uh, <laughs> accent oh, yeah. going on by yeah, white people. The, <laughs> yeah, <of course. laughs> yeah, they do. Um, we we so, just can't so, help it. So in the submarine, um, we. Uh, we get some uh, background uh, characters who are in uh, whiteface, um, which is pretty excellent to see if you've never seen that before. Um, and we should also mention too, um, there is a reason uh, one of our uh, critics fell asleep while watching this film um, because it is. I, I almost slow. did. I since we're gonna bring that, I almost fell asleep as well. That's why I sent that gift because I literally was. I caught myself falling asleep. I don't think it was the movie's fault. I, I, I had a very physical well, job. For, I had a long it, day. For me, I don't think I'm, it was the movie's fault. 
I'm a huge <laughs> kaiju fan, so when I say a lot of human drama, that it usually puts me to sleep, especially when it comes hey, to a kaiju I mean, movie. when I watched, um, I fell asleep about midway in, and when I watched the latter half of the movie today, I was, I was, you know, I was in it. I wasn't bored. I was good. Yeah, because it's the latter half, the <laughs> the good half <laughs> where stuff's actually happening. <laughs> um, uh, so, so we're in the submarine, um, and. They're uh they're slowly like kind of losing control of their submarine somewhat, um and they get caught in an iceberg. Um, this iceberg happens to collapse right as a helicopter uh, is flying over it, and they can see inside of the iceberg there lies Godzilla, who has been trapped there since 1955. Um. Godzilla makes quick work of the submarine and heads towards his favorite place ever to go to Japan. Um, as he <laughs> heads southward, um, we get our first uh, scene of monster combat destruction uh, with uh, Godzilla attacking um, a military base. Um, this military base, um, as Spooch mentioned, is uh, Russian and or Chinese controlled um, because all of the uh, equipment all has red stars on them. Um, something really cool uh, to note, um, if you've uh, been sticking with us for this Kaiju month, um, you know that we did uh, Wong Magui, um, and one of our issues is that we did not get enough set destruction um the set destruction of the military base is great um, i mean godzilla is the burninator is, this is textbook for kaiju movies this is this is what you're supposed to get that's the only problem mm. with mon Wangui. we don't get the destruction you're supposed to get this is this is your standard miniatures getting blown up and stuff that this is yeah what they, we're they weren't for. afraid to d destroy things in this one no, uh, no, they were not, and it, it was excellent too. Um, something that uh, I have always enjoyed of these films, even of being a kid and watching them for like the first time ever and stuff, um, seeing all the cool little toys that Godzilla gets to destroy. It's uh, so because, awesome. Because <laughs> all of these little toy tanks and this like little toy military what are base you talking and about stuff toys? is just these great. Are, these are grown the ass action tanks. figures <laughs> they're real ta <laughs> these are grown ass tanks they're firing tanks. at a 30 meter <laughs> they're real tanks pew, 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 pew. <laughs> they just uh, filmed this in real life <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know that <laughs> no i did it uh you know uh i always assumed that it was toys but you know uh i guess no, i was no, i guess fucking... i've been wrong my whole rush, you know See? old soviet equipment was kind of janky like like yeah, it, your... is it is russian equipment right uh something it's 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 got the red star like spooge we we can't discern mm -hmm. where it's they're from. janky but they work <laughs> but yep. like your big yeah, man sort of. japan theory starfish this is all oh, the kaijus are just actors and they're like sometimes they just get swept up in their role and they go too far uh, i mean i honestly uh, if, if you're going to sub submit to my theory that I posited, then I am eternally grateful. <laughs> um, so, uh, Godzilla is making his way down, um, and we hop back with Japanese Grouch Groucho Marx, a.k.a. Mr. Taco, um, and he's got all the Japanese newspapers on his desk, and he is not a very happy man. Um, he wanted specifically publicity that he was trying to get about the giant monster on Faroe Island, and now Godzilla's here. Wait, it's um, not Skull Island? Uh, no, it's Faroe Island. Yeah, they didn't exactly have the rights. Oh. <clears throat> gotcha. But I mean, it's basically Skull Island. It's Skull Island, okay. Yeah, yeah yes. Um, I, if I'm not I, mistaken, the only th reason why they're able to do King Kong is because the character King Kong is like public domain. Uh, um, yeah, kind of situation. I wouldn't be surprised if that was it, the reason. That, like, um, like Frankenstein. I don't know that. Like a yeah, Frankenstein. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know that for sure. I think we'll be talking about that a little bit later. Yes, because um, this wasn't exactly done with the permission of 
the King Kong creator. Right. Yeah, but so, what we should say we should that. save these uh, oh, wait, thoughts. Are, for, are we uh, talking production. about the film or the book? Because the, there's a uh, we should we'll talk we about should I'm talking about the film should... uh, Will Davis, okay. but I'll look more into that while we're getting into the plot. Yeah. Um. So we hop back to Faroe Island, um, and um, we as we had gotten white face before on the submarine. Unfortunately, we do get some black face here. Um with the uh the two guys uh who are under uh groucho marx and i mean they it's all pretty um yeah all the natives are like <laughs> japanese people in brown face yeah um and, uh, they're not polynesian people uh now, no are they're they definitely trying, not now are they trying to disguise themselves or did the natives did i miss the natives like painting their face like how did the paint get on their face that context uh, is because, very be, context is very important in this situation because if they didn't okay, put it on their so face the, i mean it's like that they're trying to be like a tribal situation which is not okay that they're doing it but they you know just context well, wait i don't understand uh, okay so i they are japanese people in a film that are doing brown face no i know what he's saying the a, the two a, the two main you know comedy guys oh, okay so so they don't have they, so they don't actually have brown face but their sidekick who's wearing like a like red striped shirt it's and like a their skipper hat, dude is yeah he's he's in blackface pretty hard and i guess um, he's the um he's like the tour guide or something of the island i'm i guess I don't like trans know translator guy. Yeah, like a translator. He knows the. Maybe he knows the people. I couldn't tell. I yeah, I kind of, I kind of missed that too. I thought he was supposed I, again, to be was... like a a person from the island that like brings people that's, to the island. That's yeah, what we're saying. Basically, yeah, that's yeah. kind of what we got. A guide translator. <clears throat> yeah. Person. All right. Um. So we're with them. Um, and they get into the island, they're, uh, you know, kind of checking it out and stuff, um, and they get told of, uh, the, their god that lives here, um, and that is, um, where, uh, where we're picking up with them, and, you know, we're just kind of dropped into this situation as well, um, and within... You know, a little while of them being there, uh, they start doing their their ritual to summon their god. Um, and it is and bad it, ass. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, it's it's banging. Uh, it, it is it, lit. Like the the music <laughs> slaps. Everybody's like doing um, you know, doing the like knees on the floor, like praying choreographed all, like, all the way dance. down. Except, yeah. Except Everybody's the lead. dancing. The lead is twerking up a storm. I mean, they are... <laughs> yeah. They're not popping it really good, but they're doing. They're they're still twerking it. <laughs> they're still yeah, doing for it. for uh, 1962, 1963, um, the dance is off the Richter scale. <laughs> yeah, it's it's lit. Oh, the and, song is great. And, too. And I think we kind of yeah, the song slaps. I'm to skip over a little bit of when the um, the two Japanese guys from the. Um, TV network or whatever came to the island <laughs> and uh, was giving out like cigarettes to the children. <laughs> it was awesome. You got yeah, it. So, yeah. So to ingratiate themselves within this tribe, um, they just essentially hand over like all of their like st like lighters and cigarettes essentially to all these native people so that like they, you know, have something exchanged for them staying there. Um, 60s was a so different they don't time. Kill them. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, well, not so too, they do too all much this. different than like ancient times. The two of like you know going tobacco. up. There's a bunch of natives, and you're like, hey, use some tobacco. Use some tobacco. You know, yeah. Use some alcohol. If you, yeah, if you didn't genocide them. <laughs> yeah, which is which is actually, I mean, that's an excellent point too, Spooge, because you know that's something that uh, you know uh, the portrayal of this, like so far. You know the American portrayal of the King Kong, like that's how natives are met by giving them tobacco and and fire. Like you know, that's that's classic America. But uh, anyways, um, so they do all this, and and a storm kicks up super hard, 
Um, and as the storm kicks up, uh, one of the uh, the henchmen, I suppose, of Japanese Groucho Marx is like, "Oh, they just think they're they think their god is the rain. This is that's ridiculous and stuff." And he's like, "Why are you so afraid? Like you're getting all freaked out over nothing." Like meanwhile, it's just like you know. 60 70 people just like hardcore praying dancing and like making these like crazy sounds of like music and stuff and he's like you know the other guy's kind of cowering a little bit um so storm kicks up um after the storm kicks up they go back you know it rain comes down and you hear something that is not thunder um and uh one of the characters actually says that like oh that wasn't thunder um, but we don't see anything. Uh, they go back uh, to their hut um, and they lay down that, for the night. They will want to know what the noise is. It, it is King Kong's roar. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is King Kong's roar. Um, so they go. They go to lay down for the night, and that's when an octopus attacks. No, not just an yeah, octopus. Not just a kaiju. An octopus. <laughs> a kaiju funky yep. octopus that I completely forgot Giant was octopus. in this movie. I completely and... forgot was in this movie. Played by a real octopus. Yeah, that, it that is whole... straight up a real octopus. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, we're gonna Apparently... have to get into a little production here. Um... Yeah, they used. Um, I read that they had like five different octopi. I guess that they uh, how... cycled through. I I hate to ask this. How many were harmed during the? Production? Um, I don't think I saw. <laughs> that um, part of it i think but, all of them uh, yeah i'm sure i don't know if they and, had uh, because they were they actually were, given uh, them go ahead. you know like two minutes okay but i think two minutes is not i mean it's all bad it's all they were harmed but not wasted yes uh, That's exactly they were, what... <laughs> um, <laughs> we found that they were probably never <laughs> they were consumed <laughs> yes so I they am... were wasted <laughs> Is that Some of the nothing stock... better than sentient meat? Am I right? <laughs> yeah, this, y'all um, like it. So, I mean, would we really feel the same way if we found out that a production company ate one of the actors after a movie? No, we wouldn't feel the same. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm just saying, like you know, there's like layers of sentience, and like octopuses are pretty sentient. I mean, it's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no yeah. one's arguing that. I'm, I'm just Even with some it, squid, it, that's why I don't they, eat them. The, that's I'm, why I don't eat I'm them. But y'all eat them. It, it was... on the equivalent as the the people are literally eating. They are, they are the more sustainable. The they are they are more sustainable seafood though more than fish. No, it's pretty harsh. <laughs> yeah. Mm. And it always yeah, makes well... me feel better when you know that they would eat you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. A, a giant octopus would totally eat me. Like. But uh, anyway, I mean, yeah, so this octopus is this octopus it's attacks, right. um, and it shot uh, for nineteen sixty two, nineteen sixty three. It is shot well. Yeah, um, but they, I, I can see them. there's a reason why they went through five of them. Um, I wonder how there was definitely they... an the idea stop motion that motion and everything. They're... All those how... parts are great. Another production yeah. question: um, How did they get the octopus to be so aggressive towards the uh, models? Would uh, did they put like breeding pheromones or something on the model? Uh, the, he was just kind of crawling on things. It was just out of water, so it was just moving to try to find water. Uh, the uh, the scenes with its tentacles like attacking things, those are all stop motion. And then when he's fighting uh, King Kong, that's a puppet. Uh, it crushed one of the models. Oh, it did? Oh yeah, I mean, they, they just kind of grab though, but they they get grippy. Things. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so um, it, yeah, it, it, it seems should... the, the octopi, uh, I, if that's the mult, is that the plural for octopus? I think we're going with that, yeah. Yeah, sure. octopi. Okay, so yeah, if the octopi that they used uh, were real, then it they seem pretty aggressive because it. They're... I think they just grip things a lot, well. you know. The I, I, octo- I don't octopi think just grab things with their tentacles to check it out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like they're like. You know, it, they have a lot of senses in their, yeah, in, their, in their suction cups. Um, but anyways, um, so we should say, uh, as uh, Spooge uh, mentioned, Kong shows up and saves the day. And he does it in one of the best possible ways, I think, that um, he can do it. Um, he Duncan rolls in. Rocks at it? 
he uh yep he he throws some rocks at it um and then he proceeds to grapple it uh hangs up he hangs it above his head and um i mean doesn't he just like eat it does he just like eat the whole thing in one go no he, he, no, he, he runs up he runs, oh, walks away it, it's no, like, yeah. it, it goes, walks away. Oh, goes, <laughs> yeah, it goes, screw you guys, I'm going yeah. home. And then and he goes, cool. like, you know, hold on, cool. walks away. Before, That's I like awesome. how we all remember this scene differently. But, but, but before it walks away, they cut to that weird, the weird furry uh, Kong suit, and it's got like a weird fake octopus wrapped around it, and it, it's like pumbling it. I couldn't tell yeah, the octopus, that was after, though. like, if he picked them up I mean, or before. it jumped on his head. Kind yeah, they you, you completely. He did jump on his the head. Fake, the, the fake octopus that they used. Well, that was when they were fighting. But then after, yeah, yeah then after it, well, it walks away. It's like done. <laughs> yeah, right. and so, Kong is so, like does Kong his chest beat too much. <laughs> yep, Kong does his classic chest beat. We get a nice Kong roar, um, and then we get uh, Kong drinking some special juice. It looks like blood. Um. And... I think it's sedative or maybe like some type of alcohol. Yeah, wasn't it red? So maybe was, it, was it the berries? It is, yeah, it looks like oh, yeah. it's the berries. Could it be poppy? So I, yep. So I have no. So is that it one is, of the pharmaceutical uh, companies? So, one it, of the berries? so so it is ferrolactin juice, uh, which is taken from a species of red berry native to this island. Um, yep, and the berries. It is a powerful sedative. So wasn't it a um, pharmaceutical company that wanted Kong for the commercial? That's yeah, the Taco is the so, uh, the lead dude of the part of Cynical Company. I think he, he also wants, wants the They wanted the berries, yeah. I wonder. Yeah, he I, wants I the berries it. too. I missed it if they talked about it being sedative, but said it. I said the King Kong is what they're trying to get publicity for the 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 berries. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they, so they, like, they don't so mention they, the berries so, all that much. So, so strong know. that they can knock out this big ass gorilla. Ah, yes, yes. Is that yes, like uh, so, berries? So, so after Kong uh, downs several uh, vases of this juice, and by vase I mean this Vats. is like a huge vat. Yeah. Um, and then the islanders perform a ceremony. Some would say they. Um, the, both of which cause him to fall asleep. Apparently, so it's so it's a mixture of the ceremony and the juice. Uh, I apparently. wonder when he's drinking the juice because I'm I'm looking at it right now. I wonder if that's a stop motion clip. Kind of looks like it. I don't know. Yeah, it, it, would, it wouldn't in. surprise me. Um, yeah. But uh, but yeah. Um, so with him asleep, um, the guy that was like. Oh, they think their god is rain or whatever is like, you know, basically telling the other guy, "All right, we're gonna throw him on a raft and bring him back to Miss to Japan, uh, for to, uh, so Mister Taco can see him, so Japanese Groucho Marx can see this." Um, and they proceed to do exactly that. Um, Mister Taco uh flies out and goes to the ship that's transporting Kong. Um, I this is me having to go. Doesn't King Kong die in the King Kong movie? Doesn't he die at the end? What? Oh uh, yes, he does. He falls off the. Okay, so this would mean this is canonically before this. So yeah, okay, yeah. This is. I was about to say this ain't his first rodeo, but this is his first rodeo. Yes, this is definitely a different. <laughs> this is definitely a different. That's what you, you're concerned about his experience level. He's only a hey, level two King Kong. King Kong. <laughs> this is definitely a different King Kong for reasons that we'll also explore later. Because uh, this uh, this King oh, Kong, yeah, other than being bigger, true, can do true. different things. <laughs> true. The, this one has it's powers. Got a special power. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, and so we are. Uh, on the ship with Mr. Taco trying to bring the ship to Japan and uh, the Japanese um, like sailing defense stuff is like, nah, King Kong has to stay out of Japan. Um, so they're just kind of chilling there for a little bit. Um, now we got to hop back to everybody's favorite lizard, uh, Godzilla. Uh, Godzilla's just rolling up. Um, into Japan, and uh, 
there is this really cool uh, He's like, I'm m- mining scene. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he finally, finally, back where he wants to go. He just, wa- he just wants to go to Japan. Just let him go. You know, I don't understand. <laughs> I, I mean, they um, probably would let him if he didn't fuck up uh, the the fucking Chevron gas station every time. Let him out. That that, yeah, that, that, that is. Uh, <laughs> he wreaks <laughs> havoc on the the train schedules too. Yeah. Yeah, he does. Um, he just likes so... trains. I'm staying up extra late tonight to see a test train pull into Brighton Station. One of my favourite locomotives might be on it, so we'll just have to wait and see. It's 73962! Oh, it's it! It's it! Oh, quick, I've got to get round. I've got to get round to see it. This is beautiful 73962. Dick my butt. What a beautiful locomotive she is. <laughs> Check out all the gear in there. <clears throat> Another marvellous loco. <laughs> I'm glad I stayed up late for this. This is a treat. <clears throat> so so he uh he he shows up. Um we see Godzilla walking into the countryside and we see a model train go by. Um and then we flash to like some other stuff. We know that um, model train is, you know, <laughs> getting smashed. Yeah, it, it sure is. Um so uh Godzilla's, you know, starting to wreak havoc upon the uh Japanese countryside. Um and that's when Kong wakes up breaks off of his raft and um, proceeds to go also to the mainland. Yes, and, and this before is where we... we get into this fight, I, I am sorry to interrupt, um, but we missed two different characters that are featured in this scene. Um, so one of the, you know, one of the TV goons, Sakurai, um, his sister... Um, his sister, sister wife. Fumiko. Yes. Fumiko. I think that's actually the opening scene. Like, he comes home and he's like, what's for dinner? Like, there's no dinner. It, like, he's, I guess, living with his sister. And starving. Oh, well, yeah. But yeah, he's being we, real whiny about it. Until that point, we're like, oh, it must be his wife or something. Oh, I and thought it was his wife. And then he's like, sister. Yeah. And then it, um, they sit down and he's his sister. And we're like, what the? But <laughs> also, there is another sister character, um, Kazuo Fujita. Who is dating his sister, um, and I, I don't fully remember what his role was besides dating the sister. Um, but I only bring him up because, like, we get a a scene of uh, Fujita, the the boyfriend, saving her um, during this train attack. And I just wanted to point it out because we've done so many, all the kaiju movies we've done have have had awful male rom- uh you know lead romance roles you know they'd be slapping them they'd be telling them that <laughs> the wedding's gonna gaslighting them that the wedding's gonna happen when it can't <laughs> yeah, there's happen there's been a, a lot of issues and this guy he's a, Gambling he's a good on boyfriend yeah he's a, I, I i appreciated this boyfriend you know yeah, overall, I was that. That's the one thing I didn't have to say about this. Story. And um, the boyfriend, <laughs> he actually, sexist. he was in Matango. Um, so there we go. I thought he looked familiar. Yeah, he did look familiar. He was in Matango. Nice. So he's he he's a Korean actor then. No, no, Mateo, no, 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 not, not one Oh, sorry, I've gotten the mix. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I mean, they're both. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're all everyone all right. correct. Everyone correct her at once. He's a, he's a Toho. Guys. He's definitely <laughs> sorry, a, sorry, a sorry. recurring uh, Toho actor. Hey, yeah. Go back into my cave. How does how does the hot seat feel, Tiny Dancer? <laughs> <'Cause> like, <laughs> it's feeling hot. I'm just going. How I'm gonna go back in my room now and just those names <laughs> up? Cry. How could you? Yeah. Um. And so we get uh, the first uh, fight sequence here, um, and um, it's kind of awkward, um, kind of all the way around. I think it's uh, more you know, of a it's like, just it's, more it's, sizing up. Yeah, than it's fighting. Yeah, right? it's yeah. They don't they don't really like interact all that much, really. Well, well there's uh, kind of some lore lore I kind of see that could go over people's heads. I don't know if it's fully intended, but. Uh, when King Kong's kind of like sizing him up, and then he gets scared once he sees the 
the radioactive the breath because yeah, uh, in in breath. this in this canon that uh, Godzilla is basically like a an ancient dinosaur that got mutated with uh, radiation uh, to to sum it up. But and that they they actually mentioned that these uh, that Godzilla and King Kong in this movie also are ancient enemies uh, that have been fighting for a long time. So I think maybe this is like a sign that. Oh, uh, he didn't used to have that. He missed a crucial. <laughs> well, was, he was mutated by American nuclear tests. That, that's, yes, yes. That is the radiation, yes. Plot. Yeah. yeah. American right. <laughs> nuclear radiation tests. Specifically, yes. yes we got it. Um, <laughs> but the main point that he used to be a, a regular dinosaur that used to fight King Kong in this game. And that, yeah. that's probably why King and Kong's freaked just, out because yeah, he's like, what the fuck? Comes out with some radiation breaths. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, before before he uh, actually, like, so uh, Kong throws some rocks at him. Um, Godzilla doesn't, like, care at all of, like, these, like, weak-ass, like, rock attacks. He has, um, anti, he has anti-armor rounds from tanks fired at him constantly. Why would a rock being thrown at him? Well, right. Yeah, to- yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, but that's Kong's thing, you know. He's got to <laughs> test out the rock first and see. It's true. But you're saying yeah, that he that's has how he escalates. fought. He has fought Godzilla before, pre radiation. Is that what you said? Basically. Yes. They, they do mention that they are ancient enemies, so we can uh, we can okay. surmise that maybe and, like in, in the far back in the back in the past. Well, my ancient enemies him when the they were living hands. in Argartha, probably. <laughs> uh, yeah. By ancient yeah. enemies, are oh, we Lord. are we to believe that they are you know it's the same? Um, I don't the same well, ones, the or is it like species? I think it's species. Yeah, it might be the like same you know species, the whole but it could crow be the same one. versus owl. Because we've already had two, we already have two, we already have two Godzillas in canon and so far. Okay, that is true. Yeah. So they, their but species when, are enemies. When yeah, as as Murda to... as Murda so excellently put, this is a this is a real crow versus owl type of situation here. Well, when it comes to <coughs> yes. a, a kaiju, it could be it could be up in the air. It it could be yeah, the same it, exact ones, could or it, it could, could be, be different ones. Because we don't know how old that these beings are. If they don't if they don't specifically say, then it's it's uh, it's viewer's choice. It's whatever you want. I choose that because since there has already been two Godzillas. I choose. I choose. I mean, it would make well more sense. There's already two it would make more sense if it was different. It was just I different choose. species. But if it's the it same gets... one, then it can be. It's, it's not <laughs> like the. It's not like there's nothing Who's in that the, Pokemon. There, there's nothing in the lore of the movie that says it can't be. I gotcha. Yeah. I gotcha. Gotcha. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, so this, so this, history, uh, casual history there. this, <laughs> this fight ends I, with, uh, Kong basically like realizing that he's not ready there. to like do, do any of this. Was that? I, I, I did not hear what Tiny Dancer said at all. I just, oh. I said, thank you for the, um, the little history background <laughs> on these creatures. <laughs> uh, I do not know the lore. So. Okay, I do. I'm a big fucking nerd. <laughs> <laughs> I love he, it. He he knows the background of them. This is a uh, Spooge's <laughs> specialty. Yeah, yeah. Power no, Rangers I, is Smokey's specialty. Yes. <laughs> I'm learning. When we get to more so Stephen King, that will be my specialty. Ooh, when we get to Stephen what? King. Stephen oh, King. King. Yeah. All right. Um. So the uh. Japanese Defense Force essentially uh, recognizes uh, that Godzilla is here yet again to destroy the Japanese uh, countryside. Um, So they have a plan this time. And what they do is they dig a huge giant pit um, and they fill it with explosives and poison gas. Um, And then they proceed to lure Godzilla into it. It was and... never going to work. Every lizard I know loves a sand pit. Yeah, to- yeah, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I, guess, so... I guess that's why they try to get them in it, so they can blow them up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do, um, and it is very unsuccessful. I, I mean, um, if he's anything like me, he wouldn't even have went near that fucking sand, because it's fucking bullshit sand. 
Yeah, like, we know we you hate lizard, sand. Lizard lo- we know you. We know sand. you. Yeah, we know you hate sand. You fucking Anakin. There, there, fucking there's Anakin also a Skywalker part. Skywalker over here. <laughs> we also get some explanation and lore uh, so on forced. King Kong and Godzilla gets too. <laughs> what was What's that, that speech? speech? I said we get some. Uh, we get a little, little bit more lore about like how they work too. Because uh, we, I, I noticed this when we just rewatched it. Because we, that's about where we. Uh, we started off, um, and uh, this is where he actually explain. He actually uh, there's someone that explains that uh, that oh that because they're using the high like these uh, electric wires to like lure Godzilla to you know places too, right? And they they explain that the he doesn't like the electricity, yeah. but then they actually explain even before we see it in action that uh, that it fuels uh, King Kong, which was was weird that they knew that. At that point, <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah, that's that some, not weird. something they should have known. Well, um, mm-hmm. but they did, they did say it. <laughs> What's that? And that, that 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 whole scene where they're digging the the mine, they're mining the the pit, is amazing. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Just wanted uh, to point that out with the little. Oh, that's the human stuff I like stuff. to see. Yeah, it's so, so great. <laughs> that's probably my favorite scene. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's uh, one of my favorites. T- it's one of my favorites for this film, definitely. Uh, specifically because you have a uh, remote controlled, gas powered uh, bulldozer that is just like huger than all the other ones and just like smashes through. Which I know is a very man thing of me huger. to like, but I just can't help it. They got no, huger I tanks. Who he got huger yeah. tanks. It was Who- the most wholesome thing I saw in the whole movie. This is why you watch okay. the kaiju movies. <laughs> they, I mean, These I just, tea. yeah, we can, we can get at it later. I just miss the creativity that comes with this type of, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. limited. It depends on the kaiju movie you watch, because if you watch something like Death Kappa, then you're going to get a shit ton of creativity. But if, if you watch oh, something that, you know, you want to talk about creativity. What is the last mm-hmm. movie we did and gave a well, top tier for uh, its creativity? Oh, uh, yeah, I would say Big Man not Japan. creativity. I, I, they're like limitations. Death Kappa is also a god effects. tier, so. You know, it's the limitation of effects that create an artistic Definitely, I agree with that. that I really enjoy. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah punk rock. Thing. Yeah, punk rock. It's um, punk rock! Yeah, it's garage. You know, yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, and so uh, they figure out, you know, um, Godzilla is weak to the electricity, but they know for some reason that Kong is powered by electricity in some way. Um, and Kong is still um, on the loose right now. And Kong approaches Tokyo. <laughs> And in doing so, tears through the power lines that the uh, Japanese defense force uh, had put up. And uh, don't to... worry, we will be touching on this later of why um, Kong is powered by electricity. We'll get yep, to it. Um, yep, and so uh, Kong is, they see Kong feeding off this electricity. He's getting like way stronger um and he busts into tokyo um he does his classic kong maneuver uh you know find find the girl um in this case he finds fumiko um and then he proceeds to take her uh to the national diet building which i guess fun fun fact um fumiko is the only non-blonde king kong has ever taken Oh, yeah. that's cool. Oh, that's oh. All, that's interesting. Very interesting. Um but yeah, um and then so uh the Japanese uh defense force uh know that the juice is effective on King Kong. Um and so they fire a bunch of the ferrolactin juice at him, uh which again knocks Kong out. Um, and they proceed to rescue Fumiko. Um, her boyfriend, however, specifically. Yeah, and yeah. Her boyfriend and brother. Yeah. Um, and uh, so with Fumiko rescued, Kong is asleep in the middle of Tokyo. 
Japanese Defense Force sees that there's really only one way that they're going to be able to deal with both of these uh, kaiju at once. Um, and that is when they have the idea, transport King Kong via a uh, hot air, or well, not hot air balloon, but just balloons um, to Godzilla, mm -hmm. hoping that they will fight each other and kill each other. Okay, so... I had already fallen asleep by by this time. Um, I fell asleep very early, just like I think right after the octopus. Um, and I woke up to King Kong flying through the air <laughs> on balloons. Yes, and I yes, the and best I immediately scene. fell back asleep. <laughs> <laughs> nice, oh, <that's> perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Couldn't yeah, tell it... if it was part of my dream or not. <laughs> woke up, King Kong flying through the air with a bunch of yellow balloons. Yeah, um, and we we should uh, also note here, um, you know, King Kong is uh, vaguely uh, ape shaped, I guess, or man shaped, and they have him flying with like both of his arms like pulled pulled up like tied up with balloons one of his legs is dangling but the other leg is like held up with balloons so he's flying he's flying in this like really awkward like stance um, which i, I guess his his hilarious. leg actually got caught the man in the suit um, of course of course <laughs> yeah his leg was actually painfully caught <laughs> oh no <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah um so we're transporting Kong uh, overnight um, into the next morning. Uh, this is where uh, Plan uh, Monkey versus Lizard uh, takes place. Uh, Kong is uh, deployed by the helicopter. They chop all the balloons um, after seeing Godzilla at the summit of Mount Fuji. Uh, well, doesn't they, Kong wake up they, and like start? thrashing around and shit yeah yes yeah yeah um yeah so deployed may be a strong word um again kaiju film you know the the monsters really uh you know control all of these all of these things um but he he starts thrashing and stuff um he gets dropped off by the helicopter and i'm pretty sure that uh the person inside the king kong suit probably got a bruised tailbone from this because they fell like kind of high up and like <laughs> right on their ass yeah he just like slid down this mountain yeah they go they go hard in these suits Ho yeah they yeah they, was... they go real hard <clears throat> they hopefully there was a lot of padding in that area i'm yes and I'm really um hoping. king kong suit actor was shoichi hiroshi and Godzilla suit actor was Haruo Nakajima. And I can't remember which scene, but I know the Godzilla actor, uh, the, the suit actor, actually breaks his arm in this, too. Oh, goodness, yep. yeah. <laughs> uh, so, fight commences as soon as Kong's ass hits the mountain. Um, he slides down. I, I know um, we didn't get... Uh, how, how long is this fight? Do, would anybody know? It's about nine minutes, almost. Oh man, really? That's a good fight length. Uh, I think it's a great fight length. Yeah, it's a decent one. Maybe we I get mean, better. For they, we for get kaiju fights. Yes, we're we're gonna get much better in the future. But uh, uh, semantics, I guess. <laughs> no, you can't. Just, that's not what semantics means. Uh, you can't just throw that out there like that's what that means. That's not what that means. Um, so, uh, so, anyways, um, Kong starts this fight um, with a drop drop kick, um, and then um, it proceeds to really not go Kong's way. Like pretty much right away after that first hit. Kong gets, like, um, five, six, seven concussions. Yeah. Um, we see... Yeah, he dark uh, souls rolls into the fucking rock. Oh, man. Yeah, I, yeah. I, like, screamed when that happened. He, like, dodge rolls, and it looks like he's about to attack King Kong, but he just slams head first into a rock and i'm yep. like oh my god is that guy yeah. okay <laughs> yeah um, Probably there, not. there's a yeah there's a lot of these uh these suit actors went hard af on this 
Um, I mean, you, that, it's a that's ver- usually kaiju at this th- th- at this time period. You, they went hard, like they got hurt a lot in these suits. Can I insert yeah, a little? Um, a too. I know we're we're saving production history, but I'd like to insert a little trivia here since we're right Go here. Um, yeah. In the fight scene, when King Kong throws Godzilla over his shoulder, suit actor Shoichi um, Hiroshi didn't throw an empty suit, but he actually threw it with Haru Nakajima still inside, um, as this was Hiroshi's way of proving he was stronger than the two. This, <laughs> <laughs> this move was one of the many martial arts influences in the fight choreography, since Godzilla suit act- actor Nakajima practice judo and was given the opportunity to choreograph the fight oh that's super cool um but yeah um so it is uh it is a uh you know mma fight uh here we get some like standing up fighting we get some on the ground fighting it is uh pretty hardcore um eventually um actually um whenever the the uh, Dark Souls uh, dodge roll into the rock happens. Uh, Godzilla proceeds to take advantage of this um, by attempting to set Kong's body on fire, uh, hoping and to just like to, throwing to rocks him at death. him, trying to cover him with rocks. Yeah, um, things are looking real bad for Kong. He's taken oh, yeah. a lot of body blows, a couple of like pretty strong head blows, and he's been on the floor more than he's been up fighting. Um, however, this is when a, uh, bolt of lightning strikes Kong, um, which revives him and charges him up, uh, for the battle to continue. Um, they continue their fight all the way down the mountain and into the town of Atami. Oh, and on and the mountain, we get a great they, scene of him shoving the uh, tree, King Kong shoving the tree down, like, uh, down uh, Godzilla's throat. And then Godzilla, like, like, explodes it like out of his mouth yeah. too, which it actually looks like they actually use some some prior techniques there <laughs> yeah yeah uh also which uh, i believe the king kong suit actor does does uh get set on fire a couple times too which <laughs> yeah i think does. they both do in this movie <laughs> yeah not uncommon for these <laughs> um we then see um them fight their way uh down the mountain um, we get the get the tree shoving scene. We get a couple more like Kong's suit kind of like getting uh, getting singed here pretty hard, um, and they keep trading blows until they just like When's keep fighting weird... through a Tommy Castle. When is the weird hugging scene where Kong's just hugging him and like electricity is just shocking Godzilla for some reason all of a sudden? Yeah, uh, when that's, does that that's happen? The, that's that's here. Uh, while they're fighting in a Tommy castle. Yeah, why, yeah. why did that suddenly just happen? Why did Kong all of, all of a sudden have that because power? He's, because he's powered by we'll electricity. Talk about it. We'll talk about it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, they keep fighting. Uh, they eventually fall off the cliff and into Sagami Bay. Um, and they have a brief underwater battle. Um, however, only Kong resurfaces from the water, swims back towards his, uh, home island of Faro Island. It's no sign of Godzilla, but the JSDF, uh, speculates that he did survive. And that's the film. And, um, so, um, uh, just I... in regards to that ending, um, <clears throat> So, again, from IMDb trivia page, um, at the fade out of the original Japanese version, both Godzilla and Kong's roars are heard on the soundtrack. In the U.S. version, which we got, only Kong's roar is heard at the end. Um, both, both Godzilla and Kong's roars was heard at, on the one that on the subversion we watched. Well, I don't remember. I think I remember it being both, but I'm not 100% sure. I could have swore the the Japanese version... I think we did watch the scene. Japanese version. I could have swore the Japanese version had a scene showing Godzilla walking away from the... Uh, that is a rumor. Okay. Yeah, it is a... Yeah. Yeah. A We're going to get into that. 
Uh, no, it's time crime. I'm going to assume. <laughs> maybe we, maybe we, maybe we watched the um, Japanese version when we were first watching it, and maybe I finished it off with the American version. Yeah, I think it, that's what it happened. It does seem that way. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it does seem that way. So because when I I had asked um, I had asked Starfish about the Groucho Marx character, and he was like. Yeah, he kind of just like, oh, what did I miss? And he's like, oh, he gets a lot more like Groucho Marxy, and like yeah, in the does. version I watched, like, and I, I didn't watch the very beginning. I should have, but I, I didn't think to because I thought it was the same version. You see, like, you there's like only a few scenes with him, and he's not doing bits. Yeah, and they had a. They definitely. I feel like they added some more scenes. Of, like, so if the, he was uh... doing. More the bits news. in the ones did, in the one that y'all watched. You didn't get the scene where he's like joking around with the umbrella, and then he's like, "Oh, gotta there was that." Yeah, there was that the scene, dynamite. and then he like, yeah, he accidentally landed on the dynamite. Okay. Yeah, I did get that scene, so well, I'm not that, that totally sure. Important. Um, he does. He does the Groucho Marx like whole like he's mad, so he's like shaking. Like viciously, violently shaking. Like he, there's a couple of scenes of that. Um, there is the uh, flipping up of the uh, the the tail coats, uh, which is classic Groucho Marx move. There's also the here's like the this is my final word on this, and then like bust through the door only to like immediately return to be like <laughs> I forgot my blah blah blah. Yeah, and, I just can't like, remember like what like I that. what I saw you know the other night when we were watching the um the sub version and then when i was watching the dub version today like i'm not i'm not sure yeah yeah i don't uh, i yeah i mean i didn't watch the dubbed version but yeah i mean there um i mean through the version uh that we watched um you know he's kind of recurring and like every time he's on screen he's essentially doing like a groucho marx style bit um for the most part yeah, I mean, he was. I just he was much. Um, he was much less present in the latter half of the one that I watched today. Yeah, he was there, but he was, you know, not as. Oh featured. yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, um, I think uh, for this, uh, both uh, Spooge and Murda. Uh, maybe Tiny Dancer as well, and even Smokey, like, all have kind of production stuff for this. Um, so I'll I let mean, them take it away. Spooge so, has probably got more information yeah, on me. First, I'd like to, you know, hear what Spooge has to say, and this ties into, you know, why electricity is a thing and all that. Mo so, well, first, most first of all, I'm going to touch on the uh, what we just ended up with there to uh, for the dual ending myth. Uh, that was actually started since the uh, the movie's uh, release. Uh, it was uh, the, I believe it was called Spaceman Magazine. Yeah, Spaceman Magazine actually. Uh, Doctor Spachemin Magazine. Actually, like spread that lie, and uh, enough that New York Times even picked up that lie. Uh, there's a, uh, what was it? Trivial. There's a, a I forget. This like, is I think Generation yeah. Three of Trivial's Pursuit. Uh, this has... is counted as a lie and not like a Mandela effect or anything like that. Because I distinctly this... remember seeing Godzilla, the Godzilla ending. <clears throat> I, I I remember. Seeing there is an edit like... on YouTube. There is an edit on YouTube that someone did do that, but uh, there is no actual from. The only difference is the uh, the cut content of like a lot of the uh, like Japanese actors, uh, you know, in the English one. And then the the whole thing with the roars. Okay, but it, so, it, yes, uh, both of them right. end with King Kong walking off into the distance. So We're King Kong off. Off. technically wins. Technically wins in both. Because, because when you guys were talking about this film, I you know you guys told me that there were two different. Yeah, I thought I believed it from this film. <laughs> yeah, could, and that I was, I, there was kind of the I... common. Yeah, the common, I guess myth. It's, it's the Mew and Truck Y <laughs> of, uh, of, of the yeah, first should, generation of Pokemon. Yeah, and you should actually uh, bring up that uh, that one uh, you and I were talking about earlier, Spooge. Um, like the classic like schoolyard. Oh, right in, the, in, the in the comment section of when I was looking at a video that was discussing about this uh, myth, 
because of how how prominent it is. Um, uh, someone in the comment section said, like, oh, yeah, I remember someone told me that not only did uh, did Godzilla win in the Japanese cut, but Gamera was there and he defeated Mechagodzilla. <laughs> 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 Which is the most schoolyard bullshit. <laughs> he, he caught um, me in three. Yeah, yeah he caught me and, in three. Yep, and we should, we should say, too, uh, that uh, both uh, Gamera and Godzilla have never been on screen together, right? No, never. No, no they okay. haven't. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so that's, I mean, it's just, it's pure silliness. Um, I, I just, I, I, I like I like that a lot. I think that's hilarious. Oh, um, uh, yes. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of fun because that, I feel like that was kind of the accepted, like, narrative about the movies. Like, oh, in the Japanese version, Godzilla wins at the end. Oh, in the American version, King Kong wins at and, the end. And why I, this was easy. I would have easy to go this... to that kid's house. You're telling me Gamera is in a movie with Godzilla? I'm coming I'm <laughs> yeah, yeah. Over to your house, buddy. <laughs> you better pr- yeah, prove that. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, but why it was so easy to spread was because um, so recently, and it's still really hard to find. I mean, and we, I, th- I think we happened on the Japanese version just from, yeah, from going on uh, online. Um, but before, it, there was never been a release, and they, uh, like a physical release of it until, um, I think, I'm trying it says, to remember. Uh, 2019. Yeah, 2019. There you go, and uh, um, it's real it choppy footage too, because they, uh, it's like secondhand footage, and it's like re-edited too. It's not exactly the the original. It uh, says so um, the original unedited Japanese version has rarely been seen and had never, um, never been made available in the United States um, until it says the supplementary disc in the Criterion Collection box set from 2019 is the first home video release of the Japanese version in the U.S. Damn. Yes. And, um, That's wild. And I know that, that though a, a perfect actual, because uh, this is funny, even though and that, that cut of it's really bad, it's notoriously bad for the film quality of it, compared, definitely compared to the American one, because it's, uh, it's, uh, it's as a feature in, in the uh, Blu-ray release of uh, King Kong Godzilla, which it... The main one on there is the American one, uh, but there was a, a cheap, I, I think it was just recently, like in 2020, I, I wish I had the actual thing, but there, they did release the, uh, the original one again with the master, with the masters, like in perfect, in perfect, like <laughs> graphics, not graphics, but you know, perfect quality mm. on, on the Japanese TV. And it's funny that they had the ability to do that, but they couldn't get that version on the Blu-ray. <laughs> which is just, which is just uh, something I like to highlight because there's a lot of janky shit like that with uh, with Toho. <laughs> they might like, have some rendering yeah, issues Toho's going on. Wild. The, that could be a pro- problem. I think they do it on purpose. I think they do it on purpose. Honestly, I, mean, I think they, I think they like being like, oh, you had to be there. Converting <laughs> film to digital is a bitch to do. Mm. Like, but they have the masters. <laughs> True, <laughs> but doesn't mean when they convert it to digital doesn't mean like when the video's rendering something in the the rendering software they use doesn't just it'll like, be better than what it they up. have maybe. now though. I mean, I don't, maybe yeah, it slows I mean, it down. It's maybe it, it makes it the lips out of sync. That there's all number of rendering issues that can go on with that. But yeah, <laughs> there's just some some. Some uh, production frustration that'll that'll that's just a common thing with all kaiju films, honestly. Hard to find. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it Especially was like old what was, it, was it the uh, what mag wang mag me we wang 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 mag wai wang mag wai. I always want to say mag wai because the <laughs> grandma. space devil. It uh, it didn't. That one didn't come out until like last year, which was wild to me. I mean, all of these things. It's just, it's like they make them and then they just put them in the like a got them locked a up. filing cabinet, yeah. yeah, or whatever, and they just leave it. Like that's it. Yep. <laughs> you know? And it's hard to imagine. 
it's very hard to imagine when we're so digital and like you can just find everything you know now and yeah. it's hard to imagine that like some of this stuff actually is still surfacing more or less yeah now um now spooge do you want to go into your other your other oh research? yes uh, oh yeah the we, the strange reason of why huh it's kind of random that King Kong can use electricity. That's kind of a kind of an odd choice it, that came out of nowhere. It doesn't seem why. very um, ape-like. Yeah, I, know I mean, I, I don't know. I, when I when I go down to the zoo, I don't I don't see I don't see them you don't shooting shock the electric. apes. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I don't know. I never went in there with them, so yeah. Maybe have you, you, have you the tried? Have you tried? Do you have the precise reason why, Spooge? He, I do. Yeah, he because does. he does. That was a great segue, guys. I'm proud. <laughs> yeah, let let him cook here. Let him cook. All right. <clears throat> because originally, that uh, the script for this movie uh, was originally supposed to be King Kong versus Frankenstein, and this was what? a uh, this was da, a script. Da, da. This was a script actually written. By the original, uh, by the original uh, uh, the special effects guy, the main dude who designed the original King Kong in the in the thirty three movie, uh, the dude who was uh, in charge of all the effects, uh, made the screenplay for it and uh, had it all planned out. And uh, trying to remember, he I, I forget how it got into John. Uh, what's his name? Beck. John. I think John Beck's hands, uh, but. John Beck took that script without uh, Will O'Brien knowing, and um, he, uh, he he did a handshake deal with O'Brien. Did it? Yeah, did a little handshake deal with them, and then uh, basically gave it to and Toho, and then let him. yeah, fucked him over, gave it to Toho, and uh, Will O'Brien w wouldn't even know that this film was being made until a couple months after it got released in Japan, uh, oh. which. He was very sad about and was even contemplating suing, but uh, he didn't have enough money at the time. And then uh, some people contributed to, since after a couple months after this happened, he died and they contribute the stress of that uh, being part of it. So this <laughs> this movie could be arguably said that it could kind of uh, kill the original designer of King Kong. <laughs> this is kind of like a um, that one Bee Gees BG, for, I thought about that from, too. Yeah, Sergeant Pepper's Lonely from the Hearts. Sergeant yeah. Pepper's movie. What's the BG's name? I can't. He's. It's not. It's not the. It's the drummer. Right? It's not Barry. It's not Robin. Yeah, it's, it's the other. One of the, the other, other BGs. Ones <laughs> yeah, yeah. The other G. Um. But he got so bullied by, like, all the haters of that movie. Uh, yeah. yeah. Col Colin Peterson. Hmm. Well, he would have been a uh, Gib, right? Uh, that's I don't think they're all Gibbs, right? Really. Drum kit for Bee Gees. I thought there was one more Gib. Uh, there's all. Uh, there's more Gib. Gib. Barry, <laughs> not Barry. Barry's the main Gib. Oh, yeah, Maurice. All... Yeah, Maurice. It must have been Maurice. That would not be the Barry other... or Robin. It wasn't Robin. It wasn't Barry. I think it was. Yep. It was Maurice. Yep. Um. But yeah, he he got it, it, it. Basically, that movie might have it, de it ruined the Bee Gees' career, and he got very depressed. Which is such that. a fucking overreaction, but it's such an overreaction. You know what? We that's can about, probably that's save movie we it should definitely for do. that episode okay. because I'm fully yeah. intended on picking that movie and giving it a god tier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no spoilers. So, um, but... so Frankenstein's supposed to be in. Uh, right, in right, this. right, right. Side back to that. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But uh, I mean, they so totally why... scrapped it. But they, they they definitely kept some elements of the script, though, and that is, that is why. Uh, is there a reason why, why King Kong has they... the? Is there a reason? Yeah. Why, why they... did they pick King why Kong pay... and got rid of Frankenstein's monster? Uh, they they uh because they thought it'd be uh. Uh, they thought it'd be a better seller. Well, they also, had, like, um, God, oh, King Kong I, huge already. They're not wrong when, about, they weren't wrong about that. It would have been a much. Mm -hmm. It is a much. O'Brien's O'Brien's vision for the Frankenstein mm -hmm. was not the like classic Universal monster. It was a monster created from other animals. Yes, I mean, like that, pieced together by other animals. 
technically it, it looked like not... a big it, the design for it kind of looked like a big hairless king the, kong though i mean the original <laughs> frankenstein is just a amalgamation of bodies stripped together so that wouldn't have been yeah. like uh <clears throat> that would have just been going with the the main source material yeah then he, and he probably would right, have had electric I mean, there's, powers there's too. That's, classic, this is an assumption there's a classic look to the universal you mm -hmm. know universal pictures frankenstein yeah it's definitely monster. not what frankenstein frankenstein's actually supposed to be sexy <laughs> <laughs> i mean i read the book you don't think frankenstein and i don't think sexy? frankenstein was supposed to be sexy but everyone has a different interpretations yeah. <laughs> he's got he's, he's got sexy. sexy if you want it to be yeah <laughs> Lurch. No, I don't shame if you're a monster. I, I mean, I, I can can flash up a, a picture of what the original uh, depiction Yeah, send, it, send it to the chat. And yeah. uh, everybody can to, can decide. I will. But anyway, um, yeah, go ahead and send it to the chat. And yeah, I need to know. You, go ahead, and, you go ahead and finish with all this research here. But one, one point to Smokey, I will say that this isn't a confirmed thing. This is only things that we could do from speculation, knowing that they that what the script was was originally through just from what people on the production said, and uh, and just kind of deducing that electricity made more sense with Frankenstein. That that's probably one of the uh, the few uh, like actually remaining things that were the si that were similar with the uh, Frankenstein versus King Kong and uh, this one King Kong versus Godzilla. So it's an assumption, but that's the only thing that makes sense to me of why uh, King why Kong electricity? is electricity. Yeah, yeah. And Spooge also. I mean, so eventually we did get a Frankenstein versus movie. Uh, yes, we got um, what was supposed to be because uh, after this, this movie did really good, uh, did really great in the box office. Um, did we have um, that? Yep. Oh uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like. Yep. So budget of this film was four hundred and thirty-two thousand dollars USD, um, and in the box office, it made a whopping ten million three hundred and sixty-seven thousand six hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah. What's in, this, in 1962, three? Like, that's a, that's mm -hmm. a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> this movie yeah. was that's made for nuts. under a half a mil. <laughs> yes. Yep. And it brought, it made everyone in this film wealthy. Considerably so, so. So they decided, let's strike while the iron is hot. And we'll, we'll start getting script ready for Godzilla versus Frankenstein. Trying to bring back the Frankenstein. We want to bring Frankenstein in this really badly. But they, yeah, they do. I guess they're just kind of wondering of how they're gonna do oh, it. Oh, then they start um, to feel bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then, <laughs> but then, um, but then they they kind of chicken out and instead make them. Uh, they kind of want to set him up himself. So they uh, they come up with the movie, uh, which released I think two a year after. I guess it depends on the sixty two and sixty three. And nineteen sixty four, we get a uh, uh, Frankenstein versus Baragon. Or I think the uh, I think the U.S. title of it is uh, Frankenstein Conquers the World, and that's where we get our first uh, our first uh, appearance of the kaiju monster Baragon, which will later uh, appear in later Godzilla films, but hmm. not Frankenstein ever again. Though uh, there is a movie called War of the Gargantuas, which are like offspring of Frankenstein somehow. <laughs> Okay, um, Frankenstein is definitely sexy. <laughs> <laughs> or that, 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 that first picture, that first picture, I, I give it to you, I give it to you. I mean, even the second picture, those are the I mean, best I don't depiction. know, he's a little Jim. The, those the are second the, one's all, very Jim Morrison. All of those are his... the closest depictions to what the book describes him as. He is supposed <laughs> to be super buff. He's, his face is supposed to be a little malformed, but it's still supposed to be a tra like the scars aren't supposed to be uh, uh, shunning. Yeah, it's supposed to be yeah. like I, attractive. I also, so when I think of Frankenstein too, I because Doctor Frankenstein I, makes the monster from very sexy and like he goes to all the hottest individuals of the village and collects their best body parts. He's well, it's still dead flesh. 
still he's supposed to be a, a amalgamation of attractive people not not just like a, a, a malformed monster <laughs> the, the, the dead a green man <laughs> attractive people a but green always, trying uh wrecking so what I also of... looks like he he does like yoga and stuff like he can move a little more limber than he, uh, he's supposed the, to be the Frankenstein we know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but he can't. He's not in permanent his rigor back. mortis. Still can't scratch his back though. Nope. Not with not with those obliques. <laughs> what I always think of too, and this is it's not really a spoiler, Meg, but in Buffy the Vampire Slayer, there is a there is a villain named adam who is basically frankenstein's monster and i can never get him out of my head and he makes me laugh so (laughs) i could also see how people would think he's sexy too but you know yeah i mean everybody is surprised when i say that (laughs) Uh, now now i'm gonna have to send a picture of the uh the toho frankenstein and see uh, how he writes for sexiness (laughs) Summer knows my my feelings on Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> I I can't agree with that one. It's, but I, it's Jabba mostly, the Hutt. It's Whoa. mostly Princess Leia, but Jabba plays his role. Okay, I understand now. <laughs> yeah, I mean he's a, he, he's an important role. He's the, he's part of the he's part he's of the part scene. Of, part of the fetish. He's part of. I I, I guess. I don't ever look I, up. They were. They're trying. They're trying. (laughs) They're trying to go with the original depiction. (laughs) Anyway, back to the story. They made them. Yeah, back to the story. Back on track. Back on track. Sorry, I was sending this Frankenstein here. I don't. I don't remember where Spooge left off. That we left off. Oh, pretty much. Actually, Frankenstein. Um, so I, I, I pretty much bad. got done explaining that about you know the Frankenstein connection to where I left off. Which I feel like we really need to watch that movie. Is this is so oh, that yeah. last? Is it, oh, sorry, you have to bleep that out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sorry. Spooge. Um, but the one that you just uh sent, Spooge. That pit, that's from the movie with the tank. That is that is from it's basically the only prosthetic is the the, the like the wig, and it's literally just a guy jumping around like beating the shit out of like this this poor monster that can't really move around. <laughs> yeah, we've got to add that to the list. Too. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, so we so now we know why King Kong is powered by electricity. Sort of. Yes. <laughs> sort of. How he pro- uh, I mean, most likely in this one in in this yeah. movie. <laughs> in this movie, in this movie specifically only. Um, because is King apparently Kong this isn't the same King Kong. How now? How do they? How do they make it a different King Kong than the? Because the he's original? bigger. He's bigger. He's bigger. Yeah, he's, got yeah. Duck he's lips. significantly bigger. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he does have duck he lips does too. You can get small. You get smaller as you get older. You can get smaller <laughs> as you get older. <laughs> That's a. I hate to. <laughs> could be another. It could be just a. He could just be an older King Kong. He could be a different King Kong. Later movies show that there's a bunch of them. Specifically, <laughs> though, he he looks the way he does because I know that I had listened on. I think it was a podcast. I was listening to another one. They were talking about um, how the special effects director, or whatever, um, of this movie wanted to appeal more to children. So I mm-hmm. think that we did get a King Kong that was a little more, I don't know, just a also little the, uh, lighter, uh, it, I guess. I would have been scared if I was a kid. I thought his face looked gnarly. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think us looking back on it, it does. But I mean, I guess I could see... Also, they were trying to move away from the uh, from the thirty three film design too. Uh, that's why mm-hmm. they uh, they say that they used like uh, macaque monkeys as more of a inspiration for like the face. Though I, I don't see that. <laughs> I don't see that either. I don't and see that at all. When I was watching, I thought Godzilla looked really cute, and I thought King Kong looked kind of fucked up and scary. Yeah, that that era of Godzilla too, like with the with the really rounded eyes and like rounded mouth, is pretty adorable. 
Well, like, it is, it is two Godzilla steps face. removed from, also, like, the, a leopard the, gecko's face. The first, <laughs> the first thought when I saw this King Kong's lip was uh, Dr. Finkelstein from Nightmare Before Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> and when you posted that, I was like, damn, yes, that's exactly what I, my brain You've got the same mouth lip. shape. My brain you lied to me again, me. Sally. <laughs> to, and I literally just comment. watched that. To comment on what Murda said about Godzilla uh, looking cute, this is when this is the beginning of the shift when they started making him into the hero. So they, I'm not surprised this is when they started making him look less intimidating and more kid friendly. Yeah, the, yeah. The direction and, that Honda did not want, but right, and they had yeah. to uh, go in too. Speaking of uh, heroes, um, the way that this uh, film was promoted is uh, fairly interesting. Um, so Toho released several interviews, um, like interview style ads for this film uh, with both King Kong and Godzilla, uh, where they were uh, acting like sumo wrestlers preparing for their like championship fight. Um, in these ads, Godzilla is quoted as saying, Quote, seven years has passed since I rose from the bottom of the southern seas and raved about in Japan, leaving destruction behind wherever I crawled. It is most gratifying for me to have the pri privilege of seeing you again after breaking through an iceberg in the Arctic Ocean where I was buried. At the thought of my engagement with King Kong from America, I feel my blood boil and flesh dance. I am now applying myself to vigorous training day and night to capture the world monster championship <laughs> from King Kong. And King Kong had a response ad uh, where he said, quote, I may be the stranger to the younger people here, but I have quite a number of fighting adventures to my credit. I will fight to the last ditch in the forthcoming encounter with Mr. Godzilla for my title is at stake. Hearing the world-renowned special <laughs> effects director Iji Subaraya is to act as this referee, I am going to return to the screen in high spirits. Uh, so very like <laughs> very old school crop. like wrestling. That is a, yeah, yeah proto WWE. And that is a confirmed uh, inspiration, actually, because uh, that's out. what yeah. the whole fighting style was. What they did say that they were going for a uh, WWF style. Type of thing, or you know, wrestling type of thing. A, King Kong's not from America. WWF was in, was in the thing. Uh huh. King Kong's not from America. Yeah, he's not from America. I, I, that's not where but I, uh, Skull Island or Fang Fung Island. Whatever his IP is, is, and that's what counts. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, so, the TM so that's just is what American they said. TM. Yeah, that's just what they said for their commercial. Like, I mean, are we all really truly from America? <laughs> <laughs> No one's native As here. A, uh, <laughs> Aren't we? Just kidding. Home. There are natives here. Watch out. We're gonna. It's not a true American kaiju. We kidnapped him. We made him American. Daddy. Well, that's very American of us. You know, makes him American. It makes sense. <laughs> that's how we get you. Damn. America, uh, damn. But as, I am. As the, as the hero of our last movie says, "Aren't we all strays?" Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Daisato. Uh, <laughs> through right, Murda, so um, and we should any, we should. Do we have any pr we, more production stuff? Sure. Yeah, we got we got stuff. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of production stuff with this, um, and I know we've uh, mentioned it a little bit, um, but just to kind of get into more detail here, um, you know, Smokey brought up America. There, you know, I know that we talked about like the differences somewhat right between it but i don't know how deep we actually dove into that dive all right so um uh, the difference in the american for, cut yeah, so, the... yep so this we mentioned at the top of this episode um that this re was released in 1962 and 1963 uh with 1962 being the year of the japanese release and 1963 being the year of the american release now uh keep in mind this is early 60s america and japan um and i think uh murda might have some more information on that in a little bit here um but because of this uh you know being a japanese product and going to america there was quite a large discrepancy so uh 
both producers, uh, John Beck and Tom Montgomery, uh, specifically directed new scenes uh, with American actors in a news report subplot that was never in the original film. Um, the editor for the Americanized version, Peter Zinner, changed the narrative structure and replaced much of the original soundtrack with stock music. Okay, so, like so this all... should solve the question then. When you guys watched when the movie that I fell asleep in, did they have this news subplot? No, it didn't. No. It they did. did the, the one the I news. watched today did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so okay. we did not see it. So we no, watched we, the we Japanese solved version. We solved it. Okay. okay. Yep. Uh, now, Universal, um, which is the... Uh, like American producer on this side has never released the original Japanese version. Um, and because of this, it was the last Godzilla film to have its original Japanese version be made available in the States. Um, however, um, it was included in the 2019 Criterion uh, release of Godzilla, the show, the Showa era films. Um, so every once in a while, uh, you know, huge film uh, conglomerate criterion will release these like uh, things. I know they recently uh, did one for like the the Blind Samurai series, um, and essentially it's like all of the stuff for like one single narrative arc um, of like films and stuff. Um, uh, however, um, it it was in uh, th this film was in included in the supplements and not on the main disc um which includes the heavily re-edited american version um it's speculated that its inclusion to this criterion dvd disc um was a last minute decision which is why it's not with all the other films and off to the side like it's in a side menu um of the criterion stuff i think it's kind of wild that cool. we just like accidentally watched both versions yeah i actually love that i actually love that that yeah. happened <laughs> um i kind of wish then... that the version that i was believed to exist did exist because that's the version that <laughs> i loved <laughs> <laughs> that version does not exist at all <laughs> oh i gotta keep i just gotta keep doing my time crimes <laughs> yep yeah you sure do <laughs> Um, and then I think uh, specifically we've mentioned, uh, you know, pretty heavily through the plot here, Japanese Groucho Marx. I think uh, Murda had some information in regards to that. Oh, I, I was actually going to um, include some of that in my final thoughts um, because I, I don't have very specific targeted information, more just thoughts. Okay. All right. Um, all right. So then um, one of the things um, I think we did mention, uh, you know, the, the WWE nature, the wrestling nature of this film, you know, with the sumo wrestler advertisement and stuff. Um, and we can kind of see a stark uh, contrast between Ishiro Honda's ideas about Godzilla and Toho's ideas about Godzilla. Um, yeah he was not happy at all about king kong fighting godzilla he said it was stupid um however toho pushed for it and toho specifically said that we should make them make it as funny as we possibly could which is why we get <laughs> japanese groucho marks so like we have like a specific like character who is like you know resembling like classics of comedy at this time um However, Honda would initially disagree, um, eventually uh, with a screenwriter, uh, Sekizawa decided to incorporate a satirical element, um, specifically about television and corporate advertising, um, <laughs> stating that Mr. Sekizawa uh, satirized social conditions very well. That was a specialty, uh, quotes Honda. Um, he also quotes, the reason I showed the monster battle through the prism of a ratings war was to depict the reality of the times. And he elaborates saying, quote, people were making a big deal out of ratings. And uh, but my own view of TV shows was that they did not make the they did not take their viewers seriously. 
they took the audience for granted. So I decided to show that through my film or through my movie. I love that kind of shit. I mean, that's what I, you know, part of what we love so much about Big Man Japan, just that, um, that satirical commentary on society at the time. Shin Godzilla also. Oh, I fucking love Shin Godzilla, yeah. You're gonna have to do that. You're gonna have to do that one. <laughs> Probably next Kaiju. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> right. uh, they, uh, the, they got the new one coming out as well. Minus let's see. Uh, I mean, it makes sense to to be able to throw that satire in there when we're already like pushing the realms of reality by fighting these huge monsters, you know. And now we yeah. can spare that. <laughs> It's it's, oh. it's a great uh, what am I thinking? It's a great um, platform for it, I guess, or avenue, you know. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I mean, we through these kaiju movies that we've done, like all this month, we've gotten like different commentaries of different countries at the time. It's it's been pretty cool. Yeah, it is cool. Yeah, and I would actually um, like to um, mention Gareth Edwards. Um, who is a Welsh film and television director. Um, he does the film Monsters. Um, he also uh, would later, you know, do uh, like partner with Warner Brothers and Legendary pic- uh, Pictures. Um, and he is the one that did the Legendary Godzilla. Um, so like the early thousands one, I believe, right? Or late late nineties, maybe. Um, but, uh, no, excuse me. He did the 2014 Godzilla. Um, and something that he says is, uh, quote, I genuinely think that deep in our thousands and thousands and millions of years with nature, there's a chance that an animal is going to come and attack us or eat us or destroy our village or eat our food. It's deep in our DNA that the creature is going to come today or tomorrow in the modern time just this small period of time in the in the lifespan of humanity we've built these massive cities and we've pushed nature out but it's still very strong in us that the, that the animal is going to come and it's going to destroy everything we've built our caves have gone from these little huts and caves to 30 story tall buildings so our nightmares become 30 stories tall as well well as um Somebody who has Godzilla and dinosaur nightmares, I agree. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, and I mean, I have some more like uh, interesting stuff, just like about kaiju's in specific. Um, so, kaiju films um, are actually one of the oldest of all time genres in film. Um, dating back to the extremely early days of like when a camera was first put uh you know in front of people um pioneers of the of this genre you know that like started at essentially the lost world king kong um and the beast from Twenty Thousand fathoms uh the idea is potentially originates from like thinking of di- dinosaurs as fantastic beasts or giants or uh, dragons. Um, however, for why it's so popular with Japanese media, um, that's kind of an interesting, th- interesting thing that I think can you know be dissected pretty heavily um, in terms of you know with with Godzilla like representing uh, you know the atomic bombs being dropped. However, you know prior to that. Um, and even after that, Japan is still very prone to earthquakes and tsunamis. Um, and so, you know, a kaiju is a good representation of a sentient natural disaster, um, which is one of the reasons, you know, why Godzilla always comes from the waves and stuff like that, right? He's always, always busting out from the ocean that they're surrounded by. Um, mm-hmm. So it's it's pretty cool. Uh, there's also a related term to kaiju, which is uh, kimono, um, and kimono is like the monsters from Matango. Um, so they're they're monsters, but you know they're they're smaller, um, and it's uh, some people actually re- like use the words uh, interchangeably, uh, kimono and kaiju. Hmm. Um, there's also kaijin. Uh, 
which specifically means a human-sized monster. Uh, so pretty interesting that they have, you know, all these terms for monsters. <clears throat> That's the popular term, I think, in a lot of the, uh, oh, shit, the, uh, uh, the, the, the fucking, the original Tokusatsu one, the one with the, the guy with the bug helmet, Kamen Rider, Kamen Rider, he's a Oh, that's cool. Yes. Um, but yeah, uh, just some, you know, interesting stuff on a little bit of the background of, of kaiju films. Uh, because, like, I always think of, like, when I think of kaiju films, I always think of, like, they're, oh, man, I can't remember the name of it, but there's one where there's just, like, a Gila monster, and it's, like, filmed from really far away. I think it's I've just seen... called something like Attack of the Giant Gila Monster. Gila Monster. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I've, I've also seen, like, there was one with, like, a grasshopper that I saw, and, you know, it's, it's just kind of, like, doing that forced perspective thing was... Uh, you know, really fun for everyone with with cameras in the in the 30s and 40s and 50s and 60s and kind of continues on still. Uh, so I think it's I think it's really cool. So um, I I think it's time to get into final thoughts. I think that this will be a, a good time to. Yeah, it is a good time I, for final thoughts. I, I just want to throw in just a few very short ones, um, little facts here. Um, just for the sake for the sake of history here, um, this film marks a number of firsts for King Kong and Godzilla films. This film was one of was the first time either King Kong and Godzilla were filmed in color, and the first time um, either filmed in widescreen. This film was also the third film for both King Kong and Godzilla, although this film isn't considered a sequel to the original King Kong or Son of Kong. <clears throat> no. And I just what I just like to give these suit actors their due because they go through so much. Um King Kong suit actors uh Shoichi Shoichi Hiroshi had to be sewn in every time he entered the suit. Um when the suit once no. caught fire, Hiroshi was helpless since he could not be extracted with ease. So he was just sewn in every time he was in oh. that suit which is pretty fucking wild yeah. the suits are death traps okay I, suits are death yeah, traps they totally are all right okay i would i was gonna go last with my with my final thoughts because i was teetering on my on my rating but that that little detail that's solidified. <laughs> does that seal the deal for you yeah it does so i i think i can go first if sure yeah, uh, so I'm going to give it a solid 3 out of 5. Uh, it's your average kaiju. I mean, it's it's got mostly human drama. Focuses on the humans a little bit too much. We did get two kaiju fights in this. We got an octopus kaiju in this as well that that I did not remember. That was a nice little surprise. The And the, the suit actors, they did go hard when it comes to the actual fighting and everything they they put their all into it they they definitely got hurt during this and you know just gotta gotta give them that respect that they that they went through so much personal body torture just to give me some nine minutes of entertainment so yeah i mean i'm not gonna watch this again for a while but i'll watch this again it but yeah three out of five Nice. Sweet. Okay, cool. Um, so uh, my final thoughts on this film is that um, it has some really excellent humorous moments. Um, going through all the production here and seeing that, like, this is, like, that was intentional um, kind of adds a little bit more for me because, like, I, you know, just uh, viewing this from the lens of, you know, 2023, this film is, you know, 60 years old. Um, I thought that, like, I, you know, was laughing inappropriately, uh, which is something that I could do sometimes, uh, depending on, like, what's, ha what's happening with what I'm watching. Um, and the fact that they, that, like, no, it was actually intentional, like, a lot of it um kind of 
made made my heart warm a little bit more towards it. Um, so I was originally going to give this film a three, but I'm actually going to land on a solid three point five um, because uh, just the way that everything is, the random octopus fight. Um, you know, there, there, like, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of like weird wackiness, and you know, narratively, there is some gaps um, that, kind of, that are somewhat glaring. Um, but for like a comedy slash monster film um, from 1963, I thought it, uh, I thought it did a pretty, pretty uh, good job of that. Cool. Um, I'll go ahead and go. Um... I think I am landing. It's hard because I, I think my heart's saying three and a half, but I almost want to give it a four. Um, but I, th- I think I'll land on three and a half. Um, I mean, you know, the first part does drag a little bit, you know, as kaiju movies kind of do. I mean, at least a lot of them, the first half is not the most interesting. Um uh, I was personally very fascinated by this Groucho Marx impersonation. I was just thinking about like how far removed um, Japan was from, you know, the war. Um, and I think it was uh, like 19 years or so, um, something like that. Um, so I-, I was just thinking about like, so when did Japan start, you know, consuming American media and like consuming like Marx Brothers movies and stuff like that. So it had me reading a little bit about it. And I will reference this article that I read here if anyone would like to go read it. It's called Bridging the Pacific Gap, Hollywood and Post-World War II Japan by Andrea Davis. Um, And it just kind of goes over how directly post-war, like immediately... Um, Japan was getting American films and American media and so much of the population was going to see American movies and it actually helped um, build a relationship between our countries for the positive um, which I just think is super interesting Um, I love when movies like this you know at, at face value maybe they're not super complicated or deep but when you look into the history of them they just bring you a lot of new knowledge and facts so i i do um i do really appreciate that um i will say the the i loved the fights i loved when godzilla and king kong were fighting um the guys in the suits were just doing some real work you can tell that they were just um beating the shit out of each other and getting hurt in the process and it just made it it made those fights more real um they weren't afraid to go and smash their own sets which like we saw in like wong Magui, they were kind of hesitant to to destroy the sets that they made um definitely weren't hesitant about it here um so i think all in all i will land on a three and a half because it does have its it's down moments and it's um kind of dragging moments but overall like this film was a blast and i kind of love that we got um or at least me and spooge got like a little bit of both the japanese cut and the american cut it kind of showed us like what both movies were doing um so yeah three and a half for me spooge tiny dancer which one are you um i can go i don't have a whole lot to say about this film but i thought that it had especially compared to the other um Kaju movies that I've watched the more classic types recently I would say this one's special effects were like top tier for the time I feel like they were really good like we know that they used the real octopus so that's unfortunate but that was really cool and they sorry um all the fire scenes and like the fire on the submarine I thought that looked really neat the way they made that look Um, oh don't play around 
Yeah, that like that was really good, and the acting was good. It was just you could tell it was you know one of the the you could tell it's a Godzilla film, or yeah. So I thought it was done really well in that way, and um, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the fighting um, scenes really well. I didn't mind the storyline too much. Um, I really enjoyed the music and the, all the scenes, uh, the, the dancing sing, sequences and stuff, and the comedy that was thrown in. I thought it was done really well, and I liked it quite a bit. I, I mean, I would say I, I give it a solid three. I'm kind of right there with every everyone. Um, yeah, I don't really. Have, it's a good movie. It was it was good. It was enjoy. It was fun to watch. Um, yeah, that's about it. Stooge. One second. I'm getting outside here. I just don't want to echo on that. He can only speak when he's outside. It's his his superpower, but it's not really a power. It's a weakness. (laughs) A terrible weakness. Um, Yeah, I'm, I think everyone's on the same page as this one, too. I'm a, I'm a three. I'm a solid three. Uh, I enjoyed it more than uh, Raids again, I'd say. there's um, Though um, some of my issues with it might are, are probably... I, I kind of share the same kind of frustration with uh, Honda. Uh, because uh, even though I do enjoy the campiness of uh, the route that we're going to be seeing as we go to the, some of these next Godzilla films with more camp can't be uh, kid friendly. It, uh, it it really isn't Godzilla's true identity. It's it's uh, like what what Godzilla is to me. Um, even though it's, it was really only recently till I uh, like seen the original one, but it was always a a natural disaster type of thing. And uh, I think I think this is when it definitely starts to get lost. <laughs> Um, and just kind of like fun kaiju shenanigans. Can anybody hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can hear you. Oh, cool, 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 just cool. I was making sure. Thoughts. <laughs> yes, yes. We were I was, riveted. I, I, I was got confused because there wasn't actually any background noise anyway. But <laughs> uh... <laughs> just making sure I'm not talking to myself here. <laughs> yeah, uh... <laughs> been, been muting it so I can pee. What else does Spooch have to say? I don't know. We'll find out soon, son. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the, the campiness of it is definitely like a charm to it, but also it's, uh, kind of goes against it as well. Um, what else? I mean, the, the King Kong suit is super janky, uh, though, I mean, it's recognizable and we'll see it again because, uh, we'll get one final, uh, Toho, uh, King Kong movie with that suit. And, uh, I think it's, uh, King Kong... King Kong escapes or some shit. Can't remember. <laughs> um, but it's that's when that's when he fights Mecha Kong. But the Mecha Kong nice. is really fucking cool. <laughs> um, but uh, getting trailing off. What else did I want to say about this film? Fight scenes are great. I mean, I like I I do enjoy the uh, the the skill that was shown. I mean, it's like a like actual judo being like used and there's a lot of uh homages to uh the wrestling just like not only in the uh in the in the the fights and the attacks themselves but with all the displays like Godzilla kept doing that one thing where it looks like he's like pointing at his nuts <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, they did not get hold these, back. get these <laughs> <laughs> and that but um I don't know it's and uh, the first part mainly yeah, dragged, and uh, we, I will, I'll say that the human parts will always be a huge weakness in kaiju films, but they don't have to be. Uh, they weren't in the first Godzilla film. It felt very necessary. Um, I think it's best when it's more reacting or um, and like planning on like trying to attack and kill Godzilla or trying to like deal with that a little like bit how, more. Like than... how Shin Godzilla plays it. Yeah, how Shin Godzilla is a perfect example of uh, a good human story going along. It it feels necessary. It's it's it, it balances out with with the Godzilla. Yeah, from here oh, on and, out, uh, most 
most human stories are going to feel very disconnected from the kaiju part. Yes. Yeah, especially we're getting we're starting to get to the ones where there's going to be whole alien plots of <laughs> of monkey men. <laughs> It's gonna get oh, real. Yeah. Gonna get real wild. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. And Atlanteans it's and shit. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's it's for it's a great kaiju film and it's a classic. I'd watch it again at any time, honestly. Uh, not one of my top ones. Doesn't really have any of my favorite kaiju in it, though. I'd say it's probably better than the one that has my favorite kaiju in it, because that 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 film by itself is not a great one. <laughs> The one with Guy again. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's my bad. There you go, three. All right. Uh, <laughs> we done. We done did it. We done. Uh, has anybody got anything little they want to add? Are we signing off? Uh, I believe I'm doing the outro. Um, yeah. Uh, if you've been listening this long, thank you so much. Uh, please uh, like the video. Leave a comment. Tell us what you think about the movie in the comments. Um, share the video around. Subscribe to the channel. And turn on notifications. Do any of y'all have a sign-off? You know I do. Go ahead. Who's stronger? King Kong or Godzilla? Idiot! It's not a wrestling match. Fantastic. <laughs> I like that idea. King Kong versus Godzilla. It, it is a wrestling match, though. <laughs> it's exactly it's what it is. Direct quote from the film. <laughs> I would like to sign off by asking everybody a question. Um, with your personal knowledge and thoughts about King Kong and Godzilla, who do you think would really win between the two? Godzilla, <laughs> a thousand percent. Well, that's yeah, fun because I think King Kong would win. Oh, yeah, what? I think I think Godzilla, I think Godzilla would win. I think that's hard, a hot honestly. take. Yeah, I think. Yeah, that is that, is that is a hot take, Murda. <laughs> yeah, I do have a hot take, but that's I'm signing off with I that think... question. I want all of our <laughs> listeners to contemplate this. Yeah, please comment who you think would actually win yeah. in a fight. We've seen two I have my King Kongs versus Godzilla. I want now. I want Spooge's answer too. It's a uh, it's Gamera. Gamera wins. Yeah. <laughs> well, Gamera always wins. That's the problem with Gamera. I do want to say Spooge was backing me up earlier when I was talking to him about it. So <laughs> Gamera. Wait, wait, I mean, why, I don't why, know. Why, now why would King, King Kong, Kong win? Can... Now that King Kong has electricity, um... I think King Kong's agility would put him over the edge. He has the ability to be faster and more agile. I feel like if he could, if it, okay, so if Godzilla you... gets that direct, let me speak. If Godzilla gets that direct hit, and yeah, he's he's in for it. But if if King Kong can jump on the back of Godzilla and grab him by the neck, he will win. Counterpoint: in... Godzilla can move like a rocket. <laughs> He's very stiff in most of the movies that I see him in. He he can literally just get in a fetal position. And he's got baby and, arms. And launch himself. He's like got a baby he's got baby T Rex arms. It's because he's been in close quarters, but we've seen that if he gets some distance and he gets a nice wind up, he can do his flying uh Flying tail slide his kick. His flying kick. Uh, yeah. yeah. yeah a lot of ifs. Slide kick. There's a the lot of ifs. Kick. But I mean, mostly really I see Godzilla with baby though. with T Rex arms and King Kong <laughs> has got them big strong ape arms. Okay. This is this is before this is before that he, this is before Godzilla gets as limber as he does later. I, I will say true, true but yeah. I want to say I'm picturing Godzilla yeah, you, you said King Kong grabbing his neck. I'm picturing Godzilla doing his little fetal rocket and just slamming Godzilla. I mean King Kong into like the side of a mountain or something like seismic tossing him yeah <laughs> i would say that I'm, suit he could be that suit he could be that got I'm, I'm sticking with my opinion i'm not sticking to, to it. it i'm just yeah. defending my opinion <laughs> give him a couple more years when it gets to late 60s no. and 70s and you get that dopey ass fucking godzilla he could kick he could kick king dog's ass Oh, wait, they, <laughs> all I have to say is they, they call me hot take murder so oh <laughs> god
the just now. Okay. Just now they're right. calling just me. Just now <laughs> they called me. Yes. I, I heard it. All right. So, Tiny Dancer, Spooge, do y'all have to uh, say? I just keep wanting to say, oh, no. They go to say he's go, got to go. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Spooge? Uh, oh, yeah. But my sign off was that gamer. Gamer ones. <laughs> nice. okay. and he did support my claim earlier <laughs> he did I, I heard him I, I'm not doubting that we've got the feud death, <laughs> death kappa overall just, just gotta state that oh yeah death kappa is getting into it <laughs> everyone's be... fucked <laughs> oh yeah everybody's fucked with death kappa well, I think the undertaker's best <laughs> oh shit you made him big, yeah. Death Kappa could take Undertaker. I will. Stop it. It'd be it'd be a fight. It'd be a fight of the ages. That's for sure. That is true, but it would be a good wrestling match because Death Did Kappa can actually the wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> We're right, getting yeah, into it. Be, be a bye, bye guys. Bye guys. Bye. Let us know who would win. We gotta talk about it. <laughs>